characters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to have back with us Miss Natalie Birdwell, who is the VP of Corporate and Strategic Development at Industrial.io. So welcome, Natalie. Thanks, Chris. Excited great to have to you. be here. Oh, yeah. So excited <laughs> to have you back. That was a great conversation on energy intelligence. We'll have to get our listeners to check. Go back in your feed and check that out if you haven't yet. But Natalie, you know, when I found out about you and what you were doing at Industrial.io, we had to connect. You're, you're local to where, where, where we're from. So I'm so yeah. excited to have this hero conversation just to, to, to hear a little bit more about you for our listeners to learn. And, and I'd love to get started just by a little bit about your journey. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, Chris. It's good to be here. Um, yeah, it's been quite a journey to get to Raleigh, North Carolina, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by way of a few different places. Um, so I was actually born and raised in, in Texas in a suburb of Dallas, and then um, ended up going to the University of Missouri for my undergrad, um, because we had, uh, my mom and her three sisters had actually gone there. So it was a good compromise oh. out of state. Um, And then when I came out, I was at this crossroads and had an engineering degree, but had really liked um, kind of being in the sales internship that I had. And so um, that's when I um, hopped in and and took a job with Rockwell Automation. Some of your listeners may know, may know Rockwell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they've heard of Rockwell. You know, we we (laughs) definitely... Now, your engineering, was that electrical? Oh, well, that's a funny story. So my engineering degree is an industrial engineering degree. Okay. I started mechanical. I one brief period of time, I was like a dual major in, in, in electrical and mechanical, which I, did you was, just, I think I was crazy. Did you like pain or something? Or I'm trying to understand. I, that. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I ended up going to uh, to industrial engineering. I had worked in, I had interned in a, a fab in um, at Texas Instruments, and so wore the whole monkey suit, you know, yeah. when I was like, you know, late teens, early twenties, and um, handled these silicon wafers that cost more than what I made for the entire summer, and so it was right. really no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Uh, but I, yeah, I, I ended up really liking the industrial world and industrial manufacturing and um, had kind of grown up around it with our family business. Yeah. And so um, Rockwell was a, a great choice and a great training ground too, of an introduction to all things uh, industrial. Um, and so did the, the whole training program in Milwaukee and Alabama and Ohio and every place in between it felt like. Um, and then I went to, to Houston and worked um, there for about six and a half years and did, it was really interesting, worked global energy market. Um, Houston's very international. I uh, got to see a lot of really cool projects. Um, about 85% of what I did didn't end up in the U.S., and so had um, had a good mix of kind of, you know, backyard manufacturers that were, were there locally. And then, um, you know, the, the global energy production, as I would call it as well. So um, and then ended up uh, said, hey, I I like this, but I wanted to know more about business. And so had always been interested in going to to get my MBA and um, I made the break and went and did that. And that's how I came to North Carolina. There was also, my, my husband was kind of involved in that slow right, <laughs> relocation right. scenario too on a personal level. But um, yeah, it turns out here in the Raleigh area, we have two top 20 business schools in our backyard with Duke and UNC. And I took the lighter of the blue okay. uh, and go, go Tar Heels. And so um was super excited to do that. And then when I came out, took a very different turn and went into, um, into government. And so I, uh, worked for the state of North Carolina for a while and, uh, ended up doing operations for, uh, for five statewide facilities. And then I was asked to 
um, be the executive director of the Coal Ash Management Commission, which if you have mm-hmm. some regional <laughs> listeners that dealt with Duke Energy and um, a coal ash incident in the Dan River um, w- between Virginia and North Carolina. And so um, really, really interesting experience. We were at political football and, and um, everything we did could be on the news the next day or in the mm-hmm. paper. And mm-hmm. Uh, and so, but it was fun bringing together my technical and engineering background too, about how to, um, look at the problem holistically and what's best for the people and the taxpayers of North Carolina and in utility rates and, um, safety with environmental safety and, and put together some solutions. So, um, from there I hopped out and came back into, uh, the private sector and worked for a startup called Industrial IO, and we just closed our Series A round of funding back in May. So we're we're exciting. That so. is that what a what a what a path! Wow, you are all over the place. And I used to call on a lot of those utilities, those Duke and Dominions and things like that. So I'm very familiar with what you were doing there. I am curious. Yeah. You know, I'll kind of want to go back to the beginning real quick. Hey, did you always have a passion for STEM and for the, those types of mm. things in school? I did. You know, there were, I think back then there were a couple of probably key, key moments. Um, One was that my, my dad was basically a self-taught engineer. He, he didn't complete college, but he um, had his own manufacturer's rep business. And so um, he repped heat exchangers was one of the big things. And when I was three years old, which is crazy, that's, held my daughter is now um i apparently walked into his office and said i'm ready to take a purchase order uh yeah. and so <laughs> he was, i think it's always been in my blood a little bit um i come by it honestly but you know he was really good with electrical things and around the house and so i was his helper and yeah. um he kind of you know taught me a- about um, wiring things and, you know, plumbing and all, all of those, those fun, but very practical skills. And, and then when I was in school, I had some really, um, really influential teachers actually, when I was in high school that said, Hey, you, you like math and science, Mm -hmm. you should pursue it and not be afraid of pursuing it. Um, and they really encouraged me to do that. And so, um, I think the the good advice that I got was when you go to college, start out as an engineer. And if you completely hate it, you can go do something else. But if you don't start out that way, you'll you'll probably never get into it. And um, I think that was a good piece of advice. And then my my brother in law, who is also an engineer, and he went to Georgia Tech, and he said, Natalie, it's a way of thinking. And it'll serve you very, very well, right. no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, and so I think those 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 were some really key points that kind of shaped the direction that I took. No doubt. I always tell people about engineering school. It just taught it teaches you how to think. That that was the biggest thing. I don't yeah. remember a lot of the calculations. I'd have to pull the books out, but just that process of thinking is really drilled into you. Absolutely, and problem solving. I mm. even. I, same way, like I couldn't tell you any of the equations or how to how to solve them, but you know how do you approach thinking about them, um, unpacking it, uh, problem solving, you know when to you checked everything that you know and and how to step back and start to evaluate you know other factors. Yeah. And I think it's just been it's really really powerful. Well, what a what a great journey! What a great what great advice you've already given the listeners out there. This is just this this is turned into be a, a killer hero conversation. So, I am curious with a with a company that called in, in, Industrial Io. You're an industry. You obviously have a passion for it. What are the challenges out there that you're seeing? Because you're you're on the front lines. You're, you're talking to so many manufacturers across across the country. Uh, so, just really get curious for your insight here. Sure. Um, well, I think there's probably anybody that works in this space can say, oh, there's, you know, there, there's things day to day that you, you deal with. Um, one of the trends that I would say I've, I've definitely seen throughout my career is this um, transition of the workforce and the transition of knowledge, mm-hmm. right? Um, and especially around 
operating industrial facilities is that mm-hmm. you've you've had folks that have worked in these facilities for a really long time, have great subject matter expertise, and um, <clears throat> are really well versed. And as they're starting to move out of the workforce. Um, kind of that next generation of folks that are that are um, moving into the workforce, uh, combined with this transformation you hear Industry 4.0 and digitization, um, and and all of those things are really important and they sound wonderful, mm-hmm. but being able to marry that with the reality of um, you know the the framework or the constraints that you may have operating a facility. Um, of where you have to be smart to make your investments and um, where you can, you know, put your time and how you train your people. And uh, I think all of those things are, are, you know, at a, I shouldn't say a collision point, but they're all in the same pot, right? Yeah. And and they're all really key for success. And and those things continue to evolve and, and to change. And so I think that that can be a challenge. Um I think the other the other thing that I've kind of just seen as a challenge is um, I've been somewhat of an anomaly as a female in the field too. Is I remember going into business school, and uh, you know they were doing the introductions and they were lamenting that there was only thirty percent um, females in our business school class, and I started laughing, and they're like, "What?" this isn't funny. And I said, this is the most, you know, um, uh, females I've been around in a meeting or in a room in in 10 or 12 years. And, uh, you know, my physics class in college, there were a hundred people and there were, there were three, three females in the class. And that was pretty, pretty typical of the industry. And so I think there's um, a really exciting evolution going on with um, more folks in, in more diversity getting interested in STEM and being a part of industrial and in manufacturing. Yeah. But that's good. I don't think that's a challenge. I think that's a, an exciting opportunity. It is. It is. And as a, as a, as a three-time girl dad, you're, you're, you're preaching to the preacher. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you what, my, my girls, they love, they love the women hero conversations in particular. And, and then when we first started the podcast, we did a series for women in engineering and we're actually going to be doing some other things that aren't around that around that and talking about some of these these topics specific to 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 women in industry and we'll have to get you included in, in that panels as we're, we're trying to put those together because you're, you're all over it. I mean the the skills gap is one thing for sure. Workforce attrition that is real, but mm-hmm. we got to be doing something for the next generation and particularly of of young girls to get them interested in STEM, get them interested in what's going on. Te- you know, hats off to your dad for being intentional yeah. just about teaching you just to base some basic stuff around engineering because that sounds like was your spark to got you going. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I was interested. And then, um, hats off to my mom too, because I can't remember. I was probably 12 mm-hmm. and our, I'm going to date myself here. Our VCR broke. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> your secrets are safe for me. It's all good. <laughs> uh, and they were going to, you know, get rid of it or throw it away because we had to get a new one. And I said, before you do that, can I take it apart? Nice. And so she let me do that on the living room floor. And I'm sure I made a terrible mess. Uh, I can't even remember right now. But she said, yeah, sure, go for it. Why not? Um, because I was curious what was inside and how it was made. And you got you got to embrace that curiosity as a parent, you know. Yeah. I mean, you kind of got to get over that. Oh, it's going to make a mess, and just just let them learn, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I love it. So it sounds like your mom, your dad, very influential in your life. Obviously, great mentors. Who? What about other mentors? I think that's something we miss too often. Natalie is we're we're not intentional enough about trying to seek out mentors that are going to really try to speak into our lives and help us, help mm-hmm. us grow, you know, personally and professionally. So any mentors that, that have impacted you that you would like to recognize right now? Sure. I, well, I think you made a great point of, um, I, I always think I could do better seeking out mentors. I think that's one thing mm-hmm. that I could improve, but, um, yeah, I, I think back across, I've had different mentors personally, professionally, mm-hmm. 
across different, you know, seasons of my life, I would say, and of, of my career. And the one thing that I would say that the, they all had in common that was really strong and valuable is to not just be able to take, um, their experience and say, Natalie, I, well, I did it this way. Right. Um, and, and, and so you can model it, but really take their experience and their knowledge and be able to help apply that and guide my situation. Right. Because everyone is different. You can, you can mentor 10 different people and that you have 10 different situations. That's right. Um, and so being able to make that translation of kind of that wisdom and that knowledge and how it can be applicable and helpful to, you know, me at the right. time, the, the right. mentee, uh, I think that that's the, that's kind of the secret sauce. That's the strong part. It is, it is. And that's, that's the piece that, you know, that from, from the, from the one that's, that's doing the mentoring too, you have to actually have some care and empathy and really understand where that individual is at they, they need to know like natalie where you are right then to be able mm-hmm. to draw on those experiences to give you that advice to move forward because it can't just be you know here's my mentor speech and you know, sit down and listen to it and if you follow this this no that's that's not it right you it, it's got to be that two-way but you know you know purposely seeking it out is what i don't see enough people doing and i'm trying to encourage mm-hmm. people to do that more purposely seek the people out that you think could help you and, and learn from them and, and ask good questions Chris, I agree. And, and I feel like it's just one, right? Mm-hmm. Because there can be personal mentors. E- each mentor can kind of serve a piece of mm-hmm. what you're trying to go through professionally or personally, and they might change. And so look at it as a team and each person may bring a different strength to, you know, to, to your team right. of, of mentors. I'm with you. Well, I love the mentor conversation. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep us going down the road. I'm curious okay. on your on your standpoint here, and, and this, you know, my daughters will listen to this, so you be be careful with this answer. I will not be no careful. No pressure. Be real with this answer. <laughs> Debunk something for them. You know, if they want to pursue a career in STEM, okay, and I, and they're yeah. nine and eleven, so there's still a lot of road ahead. We're not sure if that would be a path, but I mean, I, I definitely want them to be thinking about it. Give them something that that may be a stereotype or a myth that people think about women in engineering or women in STEM in general mm-hmm. that you that that's completely wrong. So could you set something set something right for them? Mm. Well, I so I'll take it up just a level, not just women in okay. STEM, but I feel like the the industry sometimes gets labeled as. Um, maybe not innovative, not always, you know, as innovative or cutting edge. And I would totally disagree with that because I think there's been a lot of innovation um, in in ways that maybe people don't recognize, okay. right? A lot of innovation on a daily basis of back to the how to solve problems, right. right? How to solve the acute things that are in front of you, but then also how to be innovative and incorporate all of these um, you know, this great technology and, and, you know, where that's going into, into the industrial space from a STEM standpoint, gosh, the, you know, I, <laughs> for me, what it was is I think there, there always felt like there was sort of this, um, this stigma of, oh, it's, um, you know, it, it's not, I guess today you would call it Instagram worthy, right? right. <laughs> you know, like, it's, not, yeah. yep. it, 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 it's not like Flashy. this really yep. cool, alluring um, job. And I would say that that's, um, I don't think of it that way. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's really interesting and that you can be who you are as a person and you can um you know there's a a company and i i'm so sorry i'm forgetting the name but they make steel-toed shoes for women now that don't look like terrible clunky boots um 
And so you can, you can embrace some of those things, but I, I think there's a lot of room for innovation and growth just from how um, women, women think and being able to apply that to STEM. And there's so many different ways that you can use STEM mm-hmm. in, you know, analytics, um, that engineering thinking and mindset can be used across every single industry right. today. Right. And I, I think that's, um, that's really powerful. Like when we talk about marketing, a lot of times we talk about analytics and everything's yeah. becoming so digitized today that if you, you can be a great marketer when you can start to understand at a high level, some of these more technical things. So I think that any, any, you know, personas that STEM is, is not Instagram worthy are completely false. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Well, I tell you what, that was one of the best answers I've ever heard of, of so far is walking down that topic. So Natalie, you did a great job. I have one more question about your career and then we'll, we're going to talk about life outside of an industrial.io. Okay. Sure. All right. Last question about, about you and your work. When are you the happiest? Oh gosh. Um, I, I am the happiest when I know that I've enabled better outcomes. And so when I talk about better outcomes, that is better outcomes for a customer, a client of ours that they've, um, been able to realize, uh, you know, greater optimizations, been able to um, do things that they didn't really think was possible with a, a very low lift, if you will, mm-hmm. that have, have we've made it a lot easier for them to achieve those goals. Um, I'm happiest when I see, you know, our team grow and that we have both personal and professional growth within every member of our company and um, being able to, you know, see the company grow. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, that, that returns positively for our investors as well. And so I contribute all of those things. The bottom line that I would say is better outcomes Mm -hmm. that we continue to, to push and raise that bar for better outcomes for people and for companies. Love the people piece. I mean, the comedy pieces is so important as well, but it sounds like you just have that heart for helping people too. So lo- loved it so far. So let's, let's talk about you outside of work for a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll get us started. Some hobbies. What do you enjoy doing for fun? Uh, most of my hobbies today revolve around chasing a three-year-old. Okay. Uh, to be very honest. <laughs> but I've, I've enjoyed a lot of things. I, um, I love to learn. And so I take in information like crazy, um, whether that's um, reading articles and kind of learning new things uh, that a lot of times kind of come back to the industrial world, right? If you think about it, what industrial manufacturing does is at the center of making the world go round, you know, distributing our food, um, making our clothes, distributing our clothes, uh, everything that you can imagine that you touch, you do your computers, your electronics every day. Uh, and so I really like learning. Um, but I used to play a lot of competitive sports. And so I used to play a lot of sand volleyball and softball and, um, have, have really enjoyed that over the years in the past as well. Very good. Very good. Well, don't, don't give up on those. There's, there's, you got to have that, uh, that break sometimes, right? Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Now you, you've mentioned your little three-year-old. So we, we love hearing on Eco Ask Why about family. So what, what can you share with us about your family? Sure. So I have um, a three-year-old daughter and uh, she keeps us on our toes for sure. Uh, and then my, my husband who's, we're all located here in, in Raleigh. And so he's far more interesting than I am. Um, he is a fighter pilot for the air force. And so, um, he is a great person to take to, um, dinner with new people. (laughs) (laughs) People always want to ask him questions. So, um, that's, of our uh, immediate family and my mother helps take care of my daughter. So we're very close with, with, with her as well. And um, I have 
two sisters spread across the the country okay. and uh, we try to see all of our grandparents and aunts and uncles and friends and family that's spread across the world as much as as we can which has been a little challenging in the, the oh, last for sure. two years for sure so so Texas where that was your your you grew up in Texas and it sounds like everybody went different places since then I did. I did. I grew up in Texas. I have some extended family in North Central Missouri that um, farm the the family farm that my mom grew up on. Oh, cool. uh, and so we, yeah, we um, get to learn a lot about farming, which is fun and, and um, get to get away sometimes and, and go out to, to that part of the country. It's beautiful. Uh, and then, yeah, I, a sister in Connecticut, one in Texas, and then my husband's family is from Western Maryland. And so we're kind of all over. You're all over. I love it. I love I it. Love it. 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 Sounds like you have a wonderful family. And, and and thank you for sharing with us. And one thing we love to do too, Natalie, is just get a, some um, input from you on things that you enjoy consuming. Podcast. YouTube channel, books. You said you're a big learner, so it could be personal stuff or professional, but are there any things that you find value in that you'd like to share with others? Sure. Um, so I I am not a great book reader. I like okay. books, but I consume, I like to consume articles because I can do it faster. Uh, and so from a, a kind of a, a people and a growth and a management, there's some good ones on Inc. and entrepreneur that pop up that are pretty quick to consume, you know, in the evening. Um, I've uh, some of the the books that I I do really like are um, I like Malcolm Gladwell and okay. Outliers and Blink. I don't know if, if there's any other Malcolm Gladwell fans out there, but it definitely um, speaks to the data analytical side, but puts it also into um, you know, translates into the, the people aspect of it and interaction. So really enjoy those. Um, Conscious Capitalism has been a good book. And then um, have to, our, our mutual friend and, and colleague uh, with Manufacturing Happy Hour, really enjoy yep. enjoy his podcast as well Absolutely. so we'll just make sure we're, we're right there with him on your week on your downloads now i want you got to subscribe okay <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> very cool very cool well thank you for sharing those now this is a, this is a part of the interview that i, I had the most fun with it's the lightning round uh you have to have quick responses we'll go we'll, we'll go for a little bit and and just give our listeners a little more insight to who you really are how about that Okay. Okay. We'll try it. <laughs> All right. So let's start off. Uh, favorite food? Uh, tacos, enchiladas. Nice. Anything with like chips and salsa. Love then. it. Love it. All right. How about <laughs> adult beverage? Uh, really like Willamette Valley wine out of Oregon. If you haven't been there, you okay. should go. It's great. Uh, and a good margarita. I think so you yeah. had to say margarita, right? I mean, with the first answer being tacos. With the taco. And, and, yeah. So. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Absolutely. All right. What's uh, I mean, what, I I was born and raised in Texas. So true. It, true. Yeah, it how about sticks with you? How about your favorite app that's on your phone? Oh my goodness! Uh, I don't know that I have a favorite app on my phone. What is used most? It's probably. <laughs> My text messaging app. There you go. There you go. That's fun. <laughs> That's about, how I stay in touch with my, my, uh, you know, our our great support system. So. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. How about uh, what's on your nightstand? Mm, uh, pictures of my family. Okay. Um, a clock, a iPhone charger, and my Apple Watch charger. Uh, some toddler books are on my nightstand. <laughs> so you're an Apple Watch person. So you're you're chasing the three little circles every day too. Okay, gotcha. I yes, and I am I'm not that great at succeeding. I need to do better at at completing my ranks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those little rings. They're they're this. I don't even don't get me started. All right, next question. Yeah. <laughs> Give me no. a what's what's a guilty pleasure? Mm, a guilty pleasure. Well. I mean, uh, margarita, let's see, ice cream is a guilty pleasure. And uh, 
have like Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is a guilty pleasure. Uh, okay. Okay. Of mine to watch. Yes. I really like Ted Lasso. <laughs> nice. Nice. How about, um, <laughs> shoot. I just had it. Oh, sports team. Favorite sports team. Oh, well, that's easy. So, um, Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers, Missouri Tigers, and the Tar Heels. And my cousin, my husband went to Virginia Tech, so we'll put the Hokies. See, in you got the Hokies in there too. Okay, well that can get interesting with the Heels and the Hokies. Okay, it can, it yeah. can, it can. But we've we've managed it. Very we've good. Managed it. We've had to call a truce on the golf course one time because right. we were so competitive, <laughs> but we got it. Very good, very good. And last question, Natalie: Dogs or cats? Dogs. Woo! You you passed. You passed it there. That's good because there's only one so right answer. <laughs> So fun fact, um, dogs, we at industrial, I think our people to dog ratio always hovers very close to one to one. We have a lot of dogs in the industrial family as, as pet owners. That's that awesome. seems to be a trend. Now what, what kind yeah. of dogs do you have? So <laughs> we don't have a dog. <laughs> I had a dog growing up and, uh, with our schedules, it oh, yeah. wasn't really fair to the dog to have the dog so um we foresee i i've there's a lobbying going on in our house that's begun so in in the near future in the next several years there may there may be a dog nice nice but we we utilize friends dogs to go that's right that's right very good very good well look this has been wonderful natalie uh, just to get to know you. Thank you for sharing what you have. We always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why. And this just speaks to, to, to what your passions are, what drives you as a person. So if somebody wants to say, hey, Natalie, what is your personal why? What would that be? Yeah, I I would go back to the the personal why is to drive better outcomes. And, okay. you know, whether that's contributing towards Um, getting more people interested in STEM, like you said, and, you know, creating more diversity in the industry. Um, I think all of those things can drive better outcomes, Um, you know, driving better outcomes and opportunities for the next generation of our kids and um, also, you know, in, in professional life. So, I, that's the best way I can sum it up. Well, you summed it up beautifully. And for our listeners out there, go to the show notes, check out ways to connect with Natalie. If you want more insight from her for, for ways to find industrial.io, they'll all be in the show notes. And Natalie, thank you so much. It's been, it's been a b- true blessing to talk to you. Can't thank you enough for your time today. Thank you, Chris. It was fantastic. Thanks for having me. Hope you have a great day. You too. All right, everybody, that was a great hero conversation with Natalie. I think the one thing I'll remember is that she's always striving for better outcomes. I think we could all take that away and, and, and work with that in our lives. Remember, send us those war stories. We really want those. You can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram to get those to us. And always keep asking why.